Okay. Good morning, everyone. Lamed Aleph Amad Aleph. Vivi Altman. Lamed Aleph Amad Aleph. Fourth line. Itmar. Itmar. Talking about mezuzah. Don't forget to kiss it on the way in, doctor. If there's one on the door. Lul pasuach min abayis la if you have a stairwell which goes from the ground floor to the upper floor, Amar Afuna, Im Yeshlo Pesach Echad Chayev B'Mezuzah Achas, Im Yeshlo Beis Pesach and Chayev B'Shtei Mezuzahs. So what would they do? Rashi. Zehu Darkan Aruba Be'emsa Haliyah Ve'olin La Min Habayis B'Malos Ve'osin Dalad Mechitzo Saviv HaMalos Lamata so the idea is that you basically have a stairwell going from a bottom apartment to a top apartment, but the bottom one is owned by somebody and it's in their apartment. So it's not like there's like a classic where you walk into a front door and then you have another front door on the bottom and another front door on top. You walk in and in the first person's house on the bottom, there's a stairwell. So he needs to build walls around it or else every time the guy comes down from the top, he's going to be walking through his apartment and out the front door. So there's one front door, it sounds like, and he builds a stairs. Again, I don't know exactly the front door, but he builds, he builds like a, a wall around the stairs so that when the guy comes in, he goes straight up the stairs. And then the guy upstairs has his own. So the guy upstairs... The apartments here all the time, like yeah, the basement apartments, but they have to share an entrance, no? I'm saying there, there, I think they have their own entrance. Here it's like, Kilo, you go, there's like a small area and you go in. But the point is that mm -hmm. there's either one Pesach, which means either there's only one entrance on the bottom, and then the guy on top doesn't have his own door on top, and then when he wants to go down, he needs to go through the front door, and he has to lock the bottom from the inside, and the guy on the outside has to figure it out how to lock it. Or you have two, or so then the guy on top has the, uh, I guess, the ability, and or the other way is that there's two entrances, each guy on the bottom and top, again, however you want to draw up the picture, they each have their own lock. But the point is that here there are there is either two doors or one door going from the top to bottom. Either there's just a door on the bottom, or there's a door on the top also. So if there's two Pesachs, then each of those doors needs to have a mezuzah. Amar Papa, Shmami Nami Rafuna, we learn from Rafuna, Hai in Druna de Isle Arba Babi, Chayev Be'arba Mezuzos. That if you have a chamber with four gateways, then they need four mezuzahs. Pshita, that's obvious. Every entrance needs a mezuzah. We said on Lamed Gimel that if you have two entrances and one of them you use and one of them you don't use, you don't necessarily need one on the one you don't use. But if you have four entrances, then it's not like one becomes battle to any of the other ones and you need a mezuzah on all four. Says the Gemara, This corner Pesach is chayiv in a mezuzah. Just use as an example, what we're dealing with here is we're dealing with a corner, but neither one of the walls hits the corner. That means it could be like over here where both walls hit the corner. It could be like this. Is it, this is where both walls hit the corner. And then you just make a, you make a door inside one of the walls. Here, you have two walls and neither one of them reaches the corner. So basically there's a little bit of space at the end of this wall to the corner and there's a little bit of space at the end of this wall to the corner. So you can argue that there's really no Pesach even though this is also and this is also, but you can argue that there's really no Pesach here because it's just an opening where two walls didn't actually reach the corner. So says the Gemara, yeah, there's a picture in the, uh, in the art school. Says the Gemara, Amar so it's Chayev B'Mezuzah, the corner's Chayev B'Mezuzah. And seemingly, again, he doesn't say which one, but seemingly you would need to have a mezuzah on the right side going in because this is the corner of a house. So it's on the right side going in. It has no side posts, because at the end of the day, you only have the ends of the walls. There's no side post there. It's the ends of the walls, because if one wall went all the way to the end, as we'll see in a second, then you can say that this is the post. If this one doesn't go all the way to the end, but this one does, then you can say that this one is the post. But over here, where neither one of them go to the end, you can argue that there's no post. Says the Gemara, we still consider it to be a post, and therefore you put it on the right side going in. Says the Gemara... Does it matter if there's an actual door? Or no, 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 for sure. And even today, you don't necessarily need a door. Right. You don't need a door. I.e., right. e. there are psimen, because again, the ends of the walls are considered to be the side posts. Says a Gemara. 
Rav Papa Ikel Bey Mar Shmuel Chaza who pischa to lahavale ela patzim echad mismola vavide le mezuzah. So this was a different case where there was actually one. There was one side post on the left. <coughs> that means that the Pesach was at the corner, and one of the walls was the thing, and the other side, there was no. So again, it was like this. Instead of this case, where neither one of them made it to the end, right? Here, this one made it to the end. Right? So you basically have one side post here, on the left side walking in, and you're walking in through here. So in the other case, there were no side posts at all. So we said you put it on this one, this is the right. This is considered to be the right side post. But when you have this, now you really only have one side post, this one, because this goes to the end. In that case, you put it on the left, it says. Mismola, on the left, and he made him as says, Amalek Kiman, who's that? Kira Bimeir. Who's what? Who is this that if you only have one side post, you still put up a mezuzah? So then he says, well, okay, it could be Rabbi Meir, but Rabbi Meir would say that you only put it up if you have one side post on the right, not on the left. It's interesting, the Gemara, again, without getting too into it, the Gemara seems to be questioning when there was no side post, the Gemara was fine with it. When neither one of them got to the end, the Gemara was, okay, fine, these are the side posts. Right, originally he said you don't need a mezuzah, and he said, no, a de psima that these are the side posts, and over here, he's saying that one is a side post, but it would only be if it was on the right side, not on the left side, and this one's on the left side, not on the right side. It would only be like this, if this one came to the end, and this one didn't come to the end. That would be the case where the right one comes to the end and the left one doesn't, right? Says the Gemara, So in general, what's the source that the right is primary in general for mezuzahs. Forget about this case of one, two, zero side posts in general. You have a regular opening. How do you know you put it on, on the right side? Says the Gemara, Beischa, a mezuzos Beisecha, Biascha. So they darshan that when it says Beisecha, your house, it's Biascha, the way you come. Min hayimin. Min hayimin. Ata omer min hayimin o eno ele mismol. Tamalomar Beisecha. Oh, you're reading it, Beisecha, Biascha, Min Ayimin. I read it, Beisecha means Beascha. And what's Biascha? Min Ayimin. On the right. Says the Gemara. You might think it's on the small time. Lomar Beisecha. My Tamuda. But what's the Limud? Very nice. You quoted me a nice thing. Pretend that I understand what you're talking about, but I have no idea what you're talking about. How does Beisecha imply the right? Says the Gemara. Ara Raba, Derech Biascha Min Ayimin. The way that you come is with your right. Dechi Akar Inish Kare Diamine Akar. We walk with our right foot first. Our stronger foot, we walk with our right foot first. So since the right always comes before the left, biascha or beisacha, the way that you come in, that's considered to be with the derech yamin, the right, and therefore you go with the right, not the left. Because then if it would have said yitziascha, then it would be on the right side leaving. Actually, you may be familiar if you ever daven a chabad. So the chabad's actually, I still don't understand 100%, but the chabad's put it on the right side going out not on the right side going in. If you ever go to 770, you'll notice that maybe on the front door it's like that, but any of the other doors, it's on the left side, not on the right side. So maybe the guy who put it up was drunk, I don't know. Rav Shmuel Baracha Kameidu Rav Papa Mishmeidu Rav Barula Amar. No, I don't know. I once asked somebody and they said that that's, uh, that that's the minutes, but on the left side going out. So again, I wasn't 100% clear. So Yoyada took a box and he put a hole in the lid. You see that the Miyamin and Bevo are next to each other. They would bring the money there and Miyamin Bevo. It's on the right side when you come. And again, you have two different sources that it goes on the right. My Rebbe Mayer. So where do you see this idea of Rebbe Mayer that even one Patsim needs to have a mezuzah? If it only has one doorpost, post, you need to have a mezuzah. My time, the Rabbanan. So why would you need two, says the Rabbanan, which is seemingly how we paskin. Mezuzos ksiv. It says al mezuzos. Mezuzos is two doorposts. My time of mayor, Detanya, Mizuzo, Shemani, Miut, Mizuzo, Shtaim. When it says Al Mizuzos, that implies you have to have two doorposts. Kishahu Omer, Mizuzos. Is that a creek sieve? Or he just seems to be saying that when it says Mizuzos again, Beparsha Shnia, does it say Mizuzas there? It does say Mizuzas? It could be. So if you look at uh, the second one, Uchsavtam Al Mizuzos, Pesach of the first time in Shema, I believe it says it without the Vav. 
It's very interesting, Mr. Freeman, but the Gemara is not making that diok that it's missing the Vav. You are right. It's going to make that diok by the Totafos. But over here, the diok that it seems to be making is that it says the plural Mizuzos twice. So the first plural means two. Why would you say it again? You could have said Al Beisach, and we know Mizuzos. What do you have to tell me Al Mizuzos again? Kishomer Mizuzos Barashniya Sheintam Alomar have a riboy riboy. A riboy riboy, an inclusion after an inclusion. Vein riboy riboy Elulamite. If it tells you you need to have mizuzos, you have to have two. If it says mizuzos again, that means that the two that I said really only means one. So Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Akiva are both agreeing, they're both working within Rabbi Meir, that you, only, that you need a mezuzah even if it's on only one doorpost. The first opinion, Rabbi Ishmael, is that it says mezuzo, mezuzo, so the second one is limiting the first one. One is enough to require mezuzah. Rabbi Akiva, Meir, you don't have to go through that whole darshaning. Look at the parsha by Pesach. You have to put the blood on the mashkof and on the shtei mezuzos. Why would you tell me shtei mezuzos on both doorposts? If mezuzos means doorposts, both, then shtei mezuzos is not necessary. It's superfluous. The fact that you have to tell me shtei mezuzos tells me that had it said mezuzos by itself, it would have meant one doorpost. Shtei mezuzos means both doorposts, but mezuzos by itself means one doorpost. Shtei matam loma, shtei matam loma, shtei zebana av. So again, Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Kiva agree that working within Rabbi Meir that you'll, you need to have a mezuzah even if, it's only, even if you only have one doorpost. What they're arguing is just the source of that. Is it that it says mezuzos, mezuzos twice? Therefore, the second one is to limit the first one to only one? Or is it the fact that it says I'll stay on mezuzos by Pesach, which implies that al mezuzos by itself would have meant only one? <laughs> Tana Rabbanan. That's mezuzos. And again, according to Rabbi Meir, you have to put it on even if you only have one doorpost. Tana Rabbanan. Uch saftam. What does it say? Uch saftam am mizuzos beisach ovi So again, you got to put it on mizuzos. It's interesting because he was talking about patzemechad, but one can learn the same limud. Why? Why do we not put it on both sides? So it sounds like we don't put it on both sides. Not because mizuzos is singular. We don't put it on both sides because beisacha derech biascha only. So you have a lot of limudim over here. But tanu rabbanan uch saftam yachol yichtevena al avanim. When it says Uch Saftam, you should write it Al Mizuzos Pesach, which means the right side. It means you should write it on the actual door. You write it, right? Anybody ever wonder, why don't we write it on the door? We write gravestones, we write on stone. So write it on the door. Write it on the doorpost. It'll be very nice. When you walk in, you'll see the whole Shema, you'll see the whole thing. It'll be coming down from the top to bottom. It'll be beautiful. It says the Gemara, Nemar Kan Ksiva, Nemar Lalan Ksiva, because it says Ksiva here and it says by Get Ksiva. It says, V'chasa of law sefer krisus. Malahalan ala sefer, afkan ala sefer. Just like by a get. You obviously don't write it on the doorpost. You write it on a parchment and you give it to her. So to over here, you write it on a parchment and you put it into a mezuzah case and you put it on the mezuzah. Okil chaladarach zu. No, there was another ksiva where we actually write on stones. Where was that? When the Jews went into Eretz Yisrael. Moshe Rabbeinu needed to write on stones. Then Yoshua had to take stones from the yard and he needed to write on stones. Says the Gemara, Nemer kan ksiva, nemer lahalan ksiva. Malahalan alavanim, afkan alavanim. Nira lemidama. So which is more similar? Get. Or Avanim. Which one should we compare mezuzah to? Don and Ksiva and Hagas Lodoros, Miksiva and Hagas Lodoros. Don and Ksiva and Hagas Lodoros, Miksiva Sheinu Hagas Lodoros. We're going to compare to get, which is forever, and not to the Horasha, not to the one time case of writing on an Evan, or the two time cases of writing on an Evan. You're going to compare mezuzah, which is forever, to get, which is forever as well. Once you're writing it on parchment, how are you writing it? Vaniko Seva La Sefer Bidio, with ink. Only Rach Abreidu Rav Lo Ravashi Rach Mana Amar Al Mizuzos Viat Amar Neilav Ksiva Ksiva. It's very nice that you're making a Gzeirat Shava between us and Get, but you only make Gzeirat Shavas when what you're trying to understand is not clear in the pasuk. We don't know what it means. Uch Saftam. It would have just said Uch Saftam. You should write Mizuzos. What does that mean? Al Mizuzos. But it says Meforish in the pasuk Uch Saftam Al Mizuzos Pesach. You should write on the doorpost. Don't tell me, oh, we learned from get, it means on a parchment. No. Get means right on parchment. Mezuzah means right on the doorpost. Can't make Zerat Shavas unless it's not Mefersh in the Pasuk, which is many times. But here it's Mefersh in the Pasuk, right on the doorpost. So how can you go make a Zerat Shava? Amar Kra Uch Savtam, Ksiva Tamba. Vahadar Al No. The problem is that Al Mezuzos can't be literal. Because Uch Savtam means it needs to be a full Ksiva. It needs to be a clear ksiva. And if you were writing it on the doorpost, it wouldn't be a clear ksiva. It would be impossible to write it on the doorpost. Lahavdil, and I don't mean to make these type of comparisons. Lahavdil, when you go to a cemetery, so you may be familiar with the fact that when you have a double tombstone and they write on one tombstone, when somebody passes away, the next person, they don't come to the cemetery with a chisel and write down the other one. Why? They could, 
but it would be very difficult. Even if they had the machinery, it would be very difficult to do it while it's standing up. So what do they do? They actually remove the stone, they take it back to the factory, they do it on the stone, and then they put it back on the thing. That's why you'll see that, at a, that's, why at a, that's one of the reasons that at a cemetery, all the things, right, right, there's a flat piece of concrete, and then on top of the, and into the flat piece of concrete, they put the stone. That's how it works. So why can't they just do it at the cemetery? They could. But it's not going to be Ksivatama. It's not going to be as clear when the guy is sitting there and he has to write like this as opposed to when he's in the thing. Even if he uses his hand and he uses a chisel, which they don't anymore. But even if, if it was on a table and it was clear, he'd be able to write it a lot clearer. So Uch Saftam says it needs to be Ksivatama. You couldn't possibly have Ksivatama when you're doing it on the doorpost. Says the Gemara, very nice drasha. That's beautiful. So I understand. So it can't be Ksiva, it has to be Ksivatama. So I can't write it on the doorpost. So now what do I need to make the connection to get? So what am I learning from Get? Says the Gemara, right? You're saying, I learned from Get, you have to write it on a piece of parchment. But I know from the word Uch Tam, it has to be on a piece of parchment, because it can't be on the doorpost. Says the Gemara, no, because if would have just said Uch Tam, like I just said, it would say, no, you need to write it on Evan. And then you do it in the factory, then you take that Evan, and you put the Evan on the door. So you write Shema on Evan, you put the Evan on the door. So Uch Tam tells me, first of all, you can't write it directly on the doorpost. It won't be clear. Al Mizuzos Uch Tam, and then the Ksiva Ksiva to Gitin tells me, not only do you not write it on the door, you don't write it on Evan in the factory. You write it the same way that they write again, which is on parchment. Then you write it on parchment. There, therefore, you have the Uch Tam to get. You have the Uch Tam of Ksiva Tama. Then you put it into a mezuzah case, and you put it on your doorpost. Says the Gemara, Arab Pashat Tfil Makwa Zuazu, if he looks at Echad Ma'akvan, even one letter in a Tfilin is going to ruin it. Pshita Amar Vidam Rablo Nitzchel, the Kotz of Shiyod, even if one letter is messed up, it's going to ruin it. Even the little part of the Yud, the point of the Yud. For Anami Pshita, that's also Pashat, says the Gemara, no, Lo Nitzucha, Elali Eid out of Yud, Amar Vidam Rav, Kolosha, and Gvil Mukaf, Lam Erba Ruchas, Absula. What are we telling me? Not only if the letters are missing, that's Pashat. If the letter's missing, it's Pashat. Even if you have all the letters, but some of them are touching, that's possible as well. Mukav gvil basically means each letter needs to be surrounded by the parchment. So every single letter, by definition, needs to be separate from the letter next to it in order to be separate from the parchment, in order to have separate from the letter. That's why what? That's why if it's touching, it's going to be possible. Right. Says the Gemara, Tanur Rabbanan, Lama Dalam How many times did it tell us about the mitzvah of tefillin? Four times. Right, if you say every single morning, Shema v'hayayim Shema, after you put on your tefillin, not everybody has time, but it says Kadesh and v'hayay kiviyacha. There's four parashios that mention tefillin. Those are the four parashios in the tefillin. We say Shema v'hayayim Shema during davening, Kadesh v'hayay kiviyacha are after you make the brachos in the morning. I'm not going to ask how many people have time to say it in the morning. Says the Gemara, Tanu Rabbanu, letotafos, letotafos, letotafos. What's interesting is that by the head tefillin, it actually only says letotafo three times. It says, right? It only says that in three of the parshios, totafos. What does it say the fourth time? It doesn't call the head fill in totafos. What does it call it? Ule zikaron beinecha. Calls it letotafos three times and ule zikaron beinecha once. Right? It says the Gemara, letotafos, letotafos, letotafos. Two times that letotafos are spelled are without vavs. And one time is with the vav. So you got one, one, and two. Right? The one with the vav counts as two. Harekan dalid. That's four. Dalid what? Dalid parshios. And four batim. Right? We know that the head fillin, if you have the article, you can all see the picture, but our head fillin have four different batim. It's cut into four different compartments. The shalyad. It's the same parshios in the shalrosh and the shalyad. Shalrosh is four different compartments with the four different parchments on four different pieces of paper stuck into the four compartments. What? Cloth, yes. Well, it depends who's filling you open up, right? Sometimes you find four pieces of paper. And then the shalyad is one box with one long piece of parchment with all four parshios on it. That's what it is. Says the Gemara, so letotafos by the head teaches me that you need to have four parshios in four different batim. Div Rebbe Shmuel, Rebbe Kiva Mer Eino Tzarech. You don't need this limud of totafos, 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 because the word totafot itself means tat, which in Bekidfe Ishtayim, in the Caspi language, is two. Um, and pas, be'afrike ishtayim. The word pas in African means two. Anybody speak African or Caspi? No. Okay. Says the Gemara. So that's how you know four. Either way, you need four. But the question is, where do you learn it from? Turn to Rabbanan. You would still, we're still talking about the Rosh. Yachol yichtevim al dalid oros, v'yanichem medalid batim medalid oros. You might think that you write it on four different pieces of parchment. And you put it in the four batim 
on four different oros. Now the or here is talking about four different pieces of leather put together. Right? The art scroll has a very good picture. If you're sitting next to somebody with an art scroll, if you could just flip the page for a second, we'll see it in a second. Look at the next page of the art scroll. Just show it to the guy next to you. You see that there's, no, no, the next one? Two down, right. So you see you have the animal there. You see the skin. The top page picture is the skin, is the ore. And then you see that it's the four boxes. That's how you form the boxes, as we'll see in a second. You take one piece of leather, and you basically, like Play-Doh, for instance. Imagine Play-Doh, and you basically just make four boxes, and then they dry, and they're hollow, and then you can put them in. That's how they make our tefillin. But it's made out of one piece of leather. But you might have thought that it's four different pieces, because you could just take four pieces of Play-Doh, you make them into four different boxes, and then you sort of, like, squash them together. <laughs> Says the Gemara, Talmud Lomar Ulizi Karom Beninecha. Yes, you have four pieces of parchment and four batim, but it has to be one piece of leather that's making the four batim, because that's to be zikaron, zikaron echad amarti lecha, velo beis v'gimel zichronos. Ha-keitzad, how do you do it? Kosvan al dalet oros. So again, you write it on four different pieces of parchment, separate pieces, umanichan bedalet batim be'or echad, and you put it into the four different compartments that are made out of one piece of leather. That's exactly how our tefillin are made. I think that's the difference between, uh, I don't remember, Daka versus Gas. I think that they might put into, no, I think that they're all just different qualities. So you can't even buy certain ones anymore. Im kosvan bo'or echad ve'nichan bedale batim yatsa. So again, we said you have to have one piece of leather. Sounds like if you don't have one piece of leather, it's going to be puzzle. But then within the one piece of leather, you put four pieces of parchment. Says Ingmar, bidiyeved, if you write all four parshios on one piece of cloth, and you stick them into the four different compartments, it's going to be kosher. So the way that I understand this is as follows. Again, you have, for sure you have one piece of leather and you form it into four different pieces and now you have one bias, right? So now you have four compartments. So what do you do? You then write four separate pieces of, you write Shema on one, V'hayim Shema on the next, Kadesh and V'haya Kivyach, and you put them into the four compartments. That's Lechad Chila. But the you still have, it sounds like, one, again, one piece of leather. But now you're writing all four of the partios on one page. According to the first opinion, what do you then do? You have to leave enough space between them, and then you cut. Like when you, like when you have a flyer. You cut over here, and you basically just stick them in, and then you're good to go. So it's on one page, but it's cut. It sounds like the second opinion is not even saying that, it's saying that you don't even have to cut it. It sounds like basically what you're doing, the way I understand it, is that you're folding it. You're writing it, and then you're folding it over in a way that you're going to end up being able to, if you do that four times, you'll be able to sort of go like this and stick them in the thing. You'll have that like four times. Either way, it's on one piece of paper, but uh, no, that's, so, so that's a picture of the actual bottom itself. But we're talking about now the cloth that you're writing. The cloth, the, the bottom have to be four compartments, and that's to be one piece of leather. But we're talking about when, when you write the cloth, you're supposed to have four different cloths to put in. But here we're now we're talking about if you go and you write it on one cloth, which is not lechatchila, either you write it on one cloth and you cut things here and then you basically stick them in, or you fold them over in a way that you're going to be able to then, you understand what I'm saying, you'll be able to then go like that. That's what the Gemara says. Says the Gemara... This one, I didn't have a chance to look at the tefillin book, but it sounds like you put some type of string or cord between each of the four batim. Also, the charitza have to be nikar. Your shell yad cannot look like your, your shell rosh cannot look like your shell yad. Like we know, when you look at your shell rosh, you'll actually see the cuts in the shell rosh. It can't look like one big box, even if it's four compartments inside, the outside needs to look like the inside as well. Tan Rabbanan, Ketzad Kosvan. How do you write it? Tfila shal yad kos follower echad, like we said, vim kos vabi arba oros, vinicha babais echad yad. So now we're to the tfilin shal yad. The tfilin shal yad is the opposite. The tfilin shal rosh is supposed to be written on four parchments, and if you write it on one parchment, but the evid, it's fine. Tfilin shal yad lechadchila is written on one parchment. If you write it on four parchments and you stick in the four parchments, then but the evid is going to be okay. Vitzarach ledabek. But according to this, you have to put it together. You have to either not staple them, you have to either sew them together, or you have to glue them together according to this opinion. It's like it has to be one os on the outside, it has to be one os bifnim as well. Says, Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yossi says, Rabbi Yossi says, you don't have to put the four pieces together. 
That sounds like Bidiyevid. Again, they all agree Lechadchila on the Shalyad. It should be on one piece of paper. Bidiyevid, if you have the four pieces, it's fine. The question is, are you Yotze the four pieces only if you stick them together? Or are you Yotze the four pieces even if you stick them in without putting them together? Says a Gemara. Amar Rabbi Yossi. Umodali Rabbi Yehuda Berebi. Rabbi Yehuda, the wise one, agrees to me. Shem en lo tefillin shayad v'yesh lo shay tefillin shayro shetole or alachas manu manicha. Rabbi Yossi seems to be saying that you don't have to put them all together. And it sounds like he's also arguing on this other idea that you can put them, that it has to look, that you have to have the, um, it says that you have to have the charitim, but we're talking about the shalyad now. So again, according to Rabbi Yossi, everybody agrees you put one parchment in the shalyad. Bidiyevet, if you have four parchments, it's okay. Rabbi Yehuda said as long as they're together. Rabbi Yossi says they don't have to be together. Rabbi Yossi says that everybody agrees that if you don't have a tefillin shalyad and you have two tefillin shal sherosh, just like the tefillin sherosh has to have the cuts, the tefillin shalyad, dafka v'hayala chala o salyadcha, it has to look like one. So what do you do if you have two tefillin roshes? You have to take another piece of leather and put it on top of the tefillin sherosh so that you don't see the four compartments. I mean, you can use a tefillin shal rosh as a tefillin shal yad, according to this. You have to just cover it up so that it looks like a tefillin shal yad. And we're going to see in a second that it's not so pashat. You see that Rabbi Yehuda went back, and he holds that again, they don't have to be, they don't have to be put together. So it comes out again that you don't have to put them together, and you can leave them in separate things. And it also comes out that if you use a tefillin shal rosh for a shal yad, then you have to put another piece on it. I don't understand. How can you even bring in a case of switching a rosh for a shalyad? You can only go up in Kiddush. You can switch a shalyad for a shal rosh. You can't switch a shal rosh for a shalyad. And again, there'll be a whole discussion. If you switch a shalyad for a shal rosh, what do you then do? You only have one compartment. You have to cut them up. Fine, but just leave them. Let's assume you can switch a shalyad for a shal rosh. But... How do you switch a shal rosh for shal yad? What's the problem? Well, the shal rosh is on a higher level of kedusha. Why? Says Rashi, what does a shal rosh have on it? It has a shin, and, has a and it has outside. a dalit on the back. And the shin outside. Where's the shin outside? And the shin. The shin on the on, yeah, yeah. on the shal rosh. It has a shin on both sides of the shal rosh, and it has the dalit in the back. All right. The, what? That's the shin and the dalit. No, we're just saying that's why it's holy. What? It's not on the bottom though. The dalit's on. No, no, no. But we're saying that the tefillin shal rosh is just more chamor. No, we're just saying the tefillin shal rosh is more chamor because it has a shin and it has a dalit here. The shalyad doesn't have either. The shalyad has a yud, has a yud by the knot. Where does it have a shin? It doesn't have a shin on it. It has a shin here. You have a shin in your hand. Yeah, but it doesn't have a shin on the actual bayit. Bayit. Buy buy that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm so that's what he's saying. So he's saying it's saying it has a shin on the bayit, and then a dalid with the ritzuos, and this one only has a yud with the ritzuos. He's not counting what you do over here. It sounds like this is a. This is not ma'akev. Sounds like if you go like this and you put it on, whatever you do the rest of the way is not so important. So that you're with that, that you tie it. Like if you would tie it, it sounds like again, I'm not I'm not I'm not passing the but it sounds like from this gemara that if you would just tie it and you wouldn't actually wrap it seven times, you would still be yotzei the mitzvah. So he's saying the shin, and the dalid. That's why it's actually interesting. I grew up. I always had a dalid, and I found that the uh, that the four things was more comfortable. Then I realized that I probably shouldn't do that because unless you have a minog, otherwise you dollar. should have a dalid. I know they say a double dalid. Some people. Anybody have a double dalid? Well, you have a double dalid. The four. Right? You have the four. What? That's the basis the who? The basis. The basis. The basis. The basis says. Okay. So there's a dalid. I always again, but Ashkenazim I think mostly have a dalid. But okay, I grew up with a dalid, and then I changed whatever. But now it's a dalid. I'm back to dalid. So it's a shin and a dalid, or a shin and a double dalid. Then for sure the shalrosh is more holy if it's a double dalid. Double dalit is definitely more holy. But that's what Rashi says, which is interesting. Rashi says, if you look at the last singular, the last skinny line, Tefillin shal rosh chamur kedushasa, sharubo shel shadai nase b'shel rosh. It's interesting, Rabbi. He's, he seems to be alluding to what you're saying. B'kesher shel shel rosh. It's not by the kesher. It's by the shel rosh. Shin dalid. He doesn't say where. Aval biz shel zroa ain el yud. She yesham ritzua ketan kashir rachav etzba v'sof rosh ma'at kimin yud. Roksiv, rukol amiaretz, right, etc. And he says, so he says another reason. Another reason is because the Pazu says, Vero kolami art, so that they're going to see your shal rosh, viyar dumi mecca. So either way, the shal rosh is more holy. So we see, how can you give, bring an example that you're taking the shal rosh and you're putting a piece of ore on top of it and making it into a shal yad? It's clear that you can't make a shal rosh into a shal yad. I'm not sure if anybody actually ever does this, but it could be. Lokashya, ha be'atikta ha You're right. 
By old tefillin, you can never make a shal rosh into a shal yad. You can't lower the kedusha. By new tefillin that you've never used before, even if you set it aside as a shal rosh, you can change it and see that, oh, we need another shal yad. We'll change it into a shal yad and put another piece of leather on top. Again, seemingly you're then going to open up the compartments inside and you're going to make it one open compartment because it has four compartments on the inside also. Says the Gemara, there's an opinion that says hasmana. Once you set something aside, that's as if you used it. So according to that, it's that when you set it aside, you said the shame yuchu kuchabrichu. I'm setting aside this shal rosh, but if I have to use it as, as a shal yad, I'll go ahead and I'll use it as a shal yad. But that's the difference. The one that says you could switch it is before you've used it or before you've set it aside. The one who says you can't switch it is once you've used it already. Turn around and kates on sidron. What are the parshios? Kadesh li v'haya kiviyacha miyamin. On the right side, Shema v'ayayim shamoa mismol. V'atanya ifcha, we have another b'risa that says what? Kadesh v'ayak v'yacha on the small and Shema v'ayayim shamoa on the yamin. Amar b'ayay lo kashya. Kan mi yamino shal kore, kan mi yamino shal meniach v'akore kore kesidron. This is also going to be in one second, we'll say, and we're going to stop here. But look, we're saying that Shema v'ayayim shamoa are on the right, Kadesh v'ayak v'yacha are on the left. So what does that mean? Is it on the right or left? Another b'risa says it's on the left and on the right. So it's from the vantage point of the person who's looking at you wearing the tefillin. When I'm looking at you, Shema is on my right, and then Vayayim Shamoa, then Kadesh, and then Vayak Vyacha, which is the order that it appears in the Torah. I'm sorry, I'm saying you're wrong. Kadesh Vayak Vyacha, Shema Vayayim Shamoa. So when I'm looking at you, if you're holding your, if you're if you're wearing your tefillin in front of me, and I look at you, that means on your left side, when you're wearing your tefillin shel rosh, on your left side is Kadesh. Then is Vahayaki Vyacha, then is Shema, and then is Vayayim Shamoa. On my right side, when I'm looking at you, is Kadesh, Vayaki Vyacha, Shema, Vayayim Shamoa. That's what the Gemara says is the order. This is the basis, this, this, these words of Kadesh, Li, Vayaki Vyacha, Miyamin, Shema, Vayayim Shamoa, Mismol, this is the basis of the Machlokas, Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam. Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam both agree that it comes Kadesh and Vayaki Vyacha, which again, from the perspective of the person looking at the wearer, Kadesh, and then Vayaki Vyacha. So from the perspective of the wearer, Kadesh is all the way on the left, and Vayaki Vyacha is second to left, when you're wearing your tefillin shell rosh. The machlokes is on the next two. When it says mismol, yeah, I didn't see the whole Tosos inside, but when it says mismol, so seemingly the way that Rashi understands is that what? You continue in the pattern. Then the next one, the third one is Shema. So when you're wearing it, again, from your left, you have Kadesh, Vayaki Vyacha, then Shema, then Vahayim Shamoa. The way the Rabbeinu Tam understands is that mismol, now you go from the left left, which is your right. So it'll be Kadesh Vayak Vyacha, then Vahaya, and then Shema. That's the difference. So they only argue about the order of Shema and Vayayim Shemo, as far as I understand. They both agree that from the perspective of the wearer, Shema is all the way on the left, vayah, uh, that, that, uh, vayah, vayah, that Kadesh is all the way on the left, and Vayak Vyacha is second to left. Rashi then says Shema is third to left, and Vayayim Shamoa is all the way on the right. And according to Rabbeinu Tam, Vayayim Shamoa is third, and Shema Yisrael is all the way on the right of the wearer. You have the pictures in there.